Okay, hey everybody, Arcator Zero here with another uh, review of the Orville. Uh, latest episode that came out was uh, Home, which is um, about Alara Katana returning to home. Uh, so spoilers if you haven't seen it. Um, spoiler warning. Um, another fantastic episode with great character development and a character departure, um, which a lot of people seem upset about. I can see why. Um, her character was uh, adorable, yet, you know, like super strong and everything, which was pretty cool. Uh, so uh, I do like the um, I do like the character. I do like the species. Um, uh, I think it was handled well. Um, I think everybody did a fantastic job. Um, last week I talked a lot about the. Um, the cinematics uh, and the graphics, which are top-notch, on par, if not better, than a lot of movies that are out there today. Uh, hats off. But um, this episode, what really captured my attention um, was the music. Uh, hands down. Uh, Bruce Broughton is... Uh, I've been a big fan of this guy for a long time. And if you don't know who he is, uh, he's the guy who did all the area music around Epcot and did the music for Spaceship Earth, uh, where my son happens to work. He works at Spaceship Earth in Epcot, um, which is pretty cool. So anybody going to Epcot, if you see uh, a boy with the name tag that says uh, Connor on it, tell him to clean his room. Anyway, um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm going to try and play some. Hopefully YouTube won't flag it for you know, stealing music or anything when I'm just kind of talking about their show. Um, so let's say... Now entering atmosphere. Activating gravity shield. Look at that, that's gorgeous. Absolutely amazing. God, I just... A absolutely amazing, amazing shot. Um, thought it was just uh, fantastic. Not only the, the scenery, the graphics, the design, but the music just ties everything in together. Um, I think Bruce is a friggin' master at uh, creating music and and creating emotions uh, through his music. Um, hats off to uh, Seth MacFarlane uh, for picking him to do the theme song, picking him to do the music in it. Um, he just recently tweeted that the Orville's going to have a soundtrack coming out soon, which I will get. Um, speaking about things I, I, I got, um, I just got one of these, which is the uh, um, the thing that they submit to the Emmy for consideration. There we go. Yeah, and inside there, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, they got they got Bruce uh, conducting the orchestra there. I believe that's him. I think it is. Who knows? But anyway, got this little cool piece. Um, also, which I discovered, um, I got one of the, uh, the metal badges, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's right size. Um, wish I could have got more, but they're limited production. Only a hundred of them were made. Go, uh, if anybody from Orville is watching, please go make more of these. Okay. They had the other ones. I didn't get the other ones yet. And now they're all gone. Um, they were manufactured by, uh, Kid Robot. Um, I actually did a uh, charity event for Kid Robot uh, about six or seven years ago when I was with the 501st from Rebel Legion, the Star Wars costuming group. So I reached out to somebody at Kid Robot to see if they had any extra ones lying around. Please send me some. Um, I want them. Anyway, uh, back to the episode. Um, music great. Graphics great. Regular cast. On point, as always. Humor was there. Not over the top. Not, not too little. It was, you know straight on point but the other thing that that blew me away is all 
the guest stars that came came on. Seth MacFarlane must know everybody, or everybody's trying to get on the show because it, it's it's fantastic. Um, you had Jason Alexander again from um, Seinfeld, uh, among other things. Um, Patrick Warburton, um, another another trip back to Epcot. Uh, Patrick Warburton, uh, Patrick Warburton, Warburton. Um, uh, yeah, he was he was putty. He was the tech. He was every. He's he's in a lot of things. He's fantastic. I love him. Um, but he is the host for the attraction Soren in Epcot, and he also does the voice of the uh, robot in Star Tours uh, towards the end of the line there when he's talking to everybody. And they change his voice up a little bit, but you can still kind of hear it in there, um, which is very cool. So uh, another Epcot connection there. Um, you had um, Robert Picardo. Uh, he was um, one of the doctors in Star Trek. Uh, the emergency medical uh, hologram. Yeah, I like Trek too. Um, uh, but then you had another one, John Billingsley. Um, and they all fantastic. Candace King, um, she was from the Vampire Diaries. Um, and I, I can't remember her name, but she was from, I think she's from Herman's Head, uh, which was an old sitcom, which was also. Uh, pretty cool about what was going inside this guy's head at all time. He had all these like little personalities. Um, fantastic. And a little throwback to Epcot again. They used to have an attraction like that um, uh, where you'd sit inside a uh, teenager's head and uh, they had Hans and Franz and everybody there and um, as different parts of like the brain, the body, and um, um, it was uh, Cranium Command. Or Cranium Commando? Cranium Command. I think, I think it was Cranium Command. Um, it was great. So there were a lot of throwbacks to Epcot. Uh, the story itself, um, the plot that it, it went on, um, uh, that she was losing her super strength from uh, being in, um, not in her home world gravity for so long. Um, I thought that was interesting. Uh, there was uh, a good uh, relationship development between her and her father. Um, my wife cried at that part. I cried at the pickles part at the end. Um, and I could see it coming. I said, oh, no, it's going to be a jar of pickles. I'm going to lose it. If it's going to be a jar of pickles, I'm going to lose it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it was a jar of pickles. Um, I, I thought that was fantastic. I always thought the, the, the big lead up for that joke, um, that running joke, that running gag, was going to be he was going to actually have to open a jar of pickles at one point <laughs> and literally call her over to open it up, which uh, I thought would have been funny, too. But this was great. Um, apparently she's leaving the show. Uh, they're going to have somebody else come on. Um, Patrick Warburton was the uh, interim security chief with the uh, extra esophagus. Um, I think he did a fantastic job. I, I think some of the things that, that strike me as kind of odd is how in the future they're so 80s-centric about a lot of 80s pop culture, like when they played uh, Cindy Lauper. Um, and uh, some of the inflections because he talked like a surfer dude and I wonder if it's like on the translator you get to choose your voice you know how you can choose a voice for uh, um, like your GPS or something like that I wonder if that's like well I like the sound of the surfer dude let me let me choose that for the uh, universal translator who knows um, but overall uh, another great episode, um, right on point. Um, they're not slowing down this season. Every single episode has been fantastic. Looking forward to the next ones. Uh, what did you guys think of the episode? Leave in the comments. Uh, please subscribe. Um, you know, trying to do my channel a little bit better each and every time. Um, and I will uh, talk to you next week after next week's episode. Uh, have a great night.